Hi there, welcome, welcome friends. Welcome to Home Keepers. Glad to be with you today. And every day, it is a blessing to connect with you this way. And thank you for all of the wonderful things you send us. You are so great, you know, we got Easter cards from you. We've received Christmas cards, you know, last Christmas, and I've still got all of them. And uh, appreciate your thoughtfulness that way. God bless you for that. Uh, my guest today is a return guest, Reverend Dave Williams. I believe he was with the Mount Hope Church in Lansing, Michigan for 30 years. I, I think that's the right amount of time. And oh, what a great church it was. I was privileged to speak there a couple of times. But now he travels in a great ministry and we will have his website up and also during the interview, uh, you can receive free, if you uh, follow the instructions on the crawl that comes across your screen, and he's offering you a preview of coming prophetic attractions out of Mark 13. That's Mark in the Bible, a book in the Bible. And you know what really grabs me on this? The guess that God is sending to us to talk about the end times. I don't know about you. I am a news junkie. I watch a lot of news. People say they don't walk chinny, so you know, whatever is best for you. But I watch a lot and I'm telling you, it's saying every day on television, if you still get a newspaper in the newspaper, wherever you get your news, Jesus is coming. It is very plain. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. And then I'm going to join Stephanie for a chicken Waldorf salad. Uh, I think most people know what a Waldorf salad is, but maybe not. Uh, so we'll put it together. It's just something you put good things in and mix it up, and that's what we will do. I would like to, again, remind you we are viewer-supported, and thank you for every dime you send. We appreciate it so much, and you can use your credit card. There's a number there for that, 1-800-229-0059, or write to us. Like, I write checks, and so I would send one to Home Keepers, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And you would do what? I would be online or <laughs> calling in with my debit card. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, whatever works, we appreciate it either way. And you told me you, you've never fixed one of these before? No, no. Mm -mm. I, remember, I mean, probably on here we've done something similar, but not at home. I remember a lot growing I haven't heard of a Waldorf for quite a while. I assume it came out of the Waldorf in New York uh, decades ago. But uh, if you want to give them the... Amounts, and I'm yes. going to finish cutting up a Granny Smith apple. To be honest, if I made this, I'd probably get another kind of apple because these are kind of tart. I love tart, so I would Do stick you? with the Granny Smith. So she's cutting that up. She has two tablespoons of lemon in there that she's going to mix up so that they don't turn brown. Mm -hmm. I have two cups of rotisserie chicken. This is a great recipe for either rotisserie chicken or if you have leftover chicken from another meal mm -hmm. or if you cook on Sundays and make a whole bunch of meats. This, this is, is kind of noisy, one. isn't it? A little bit. So I have two stalks of celery that are chopped up nicely. I have a cup of seedless grapes, a half a cup of toasted walnuts, mm -hmm. two third cups of mayo, and some salt and pepper. And all we're gonna do is mix it all up. Mm -hmm. It's so easy. I was thinking though, Perhaps you could get a little creative with the mayo. Oh, sure. You could get, I mean, that's what recipes are all about. Mm -hmm. You take the, the basic recipe and then you do what you want to do to it. Yeah, if you've, if we, you've watched us very long, mm -hmm. I don't like hot stuff. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't like uh, green peppers or any kind of pepper. Right? right, so we adjust to our likings. Yes, we yeah. do. Here's the walnuts. And probably all those married folks out there know what their husbands like and don't sure, like. What sure. Is, da is there anything well, Dave doesn't it, like? It's not that he doesn't like stuff, but stuff really affects his stomach. Really? So we have, yeah. So we have to, I have to, like, and then I have to remember for the next time I want to make that meal that it affected him. Cheeses, he can't do a lot of dairy. I bet there's a lot of women out there right now relating to what you're saying. Yeah, so I, I need to adjust, and then I just need to remember to adjust. That's usually the if problem. If your husband, your children, you know, have a little digestive problem with mm -hmm. certain things, you adjust. Yes, so I'm just going to mix it this is all up. I'm going to put salt and pepper, and then we're going to taste it. Mm -hmm. So good. Let me go ahead and put a What lunch. about a lunch? Every time I, I wear this shirt, I say I'm not going to wear it the next time we cook because of the sleeves, and I wear it again when we cook. Um, if you're going to have a brunch, 
this oh my cook. gosh have some ladies In fact, over i, I mm. look at this as a ladies luncheon thing yes it's time to get back to that don't you think it's kind of a feminine yes it's time to get back to fellowshipping it's yeah. time to get back to being together and doing stuff together invite some ladies over and, and uh, put fellowship. your phone down. I think yes. if I had guests and they come in with a phone, I say, okay, like your kids' classroom, yeah. we're going to put all the phones in, in a basket. Box. Yes. Yeah. Or if you go to a restaurant, it's fun too. Everyone yes. puts their phone down. The first one that picks it up and plays with the phone has to pay for the meal. <laughs> that was worth yeah, your turning yeah, in. Yeah, talk about um, not wanting to get on your phone. I, t I, yeah. think, it's, I think it's disgusting. I'm yeah. sorry. Um, I remember I forgot my phone one day and I, I survived. Yeah, we well, I put it. it on Facebook and you can't believe the people who just well, wrote I in and said, so oh, disconnected. How did you survive? What if somebody needs me? What yes, if there's an emergency? Yes, yes. And I know not one phone number, so. Yeah. <laughs> That's the bad part oh, about cell phones. Oh, that is good. Oh. That's my lunch. That is delicious. And to all you beautiful camera people, it's so it can easy. be your lunch too. Well, I'll take okay. this now. I don't want you to miss one word that Dave Williams has to say. Mm -hmm. I am so interested in the end times. Don't you believe the Lord is coming? It's, yes. it's just there. And so we're going to talk about that. And when you dig into the disciples said, what will be the sign of your coming? Said, okay, if you want this recipe, that information is coming up on your screen. Use it and we'll get it right out to you. Stay with us. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Welcome back. Thank you, Arthleen. It's great to be back with you. Thanks for having me. Yes. Uh Almost a regular, sort of. You come down when it gets cold in Michigan. And I do. Yes. And it's always wise. great being with you. You know why? Because you are a straight shooter. You oh. don't put up with nonsense. <laughs> you have always been just straight as an arrow. And I appreciate your example. Well, I've always appreciated that the Lord brought us together. We've had ministry together several times. Yes, we yeah. have. And it's always been really good. I still remember the time at uh, Mount Hope Church in Lansing uh -huh. where I pastored, and you were talking about health issues. Uh -huh. And you said something about pork. Uh -huh. And it, it was something <laughs> bad about pork. And what happened? The chef made something pork for us. <laughs> it always happens, and doesn't I, it? I, oh, I was so mad. It, it always <laughs> happened, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. I was going over actually the uh, lyrics of a song that just spells out what's happening in the end times. Uh, it's quite extraordinary that the writer of that song was able to put the scripture to a melody and it's right on. And then I get your newsletter and um, there will be information coming up on the screen for you and uh, you can connect with him and also we're making a special offer and you watch the information for that and that is a video of Mark chapter 13 verse by verse that I that I preached I, I taught it in mm -hmm. one session verse by verse through Mark chapter 13 which is all about the end times and you watch that will be coming up uh, in a crawl fashion so you can write it down but I've been so intrigued and to think that when I was younger, a little girl growing up in a preacher's home, we sing about heaven and a lot of preaching, preaching about heaven more then than now. And we're that close to it now. We need a little bit more teaching. So from you're right on scripture here, and I want to go over each bullet point here, uh, that deception will run rampant. Hello. <laughs> oh. You ever watch the politicians? Arthelene, and this doesn't mean just religious deception, but political deception, social deception, financial deception. Remember Bernie Madoff and mm -hmm. some of the Ponzi schemes, even many Christian ministries that got involved in mm -hmm. them because of deception. But the worst deception is spiritual deception. Mm -hmm. When people are deceived 
into believing they're going to heaven when they're really not. When or, they, or the wrong God. The, We've the, seen the Pope with the leader of Islam recently. Um, the deception is so rampant that it kind of makes my head spin when you really think about it, that lying is just acceptable. It is. And the interesting thing is, Jesus said that would be the number one sign. He mentioned it over and over again. Take heed that no one deceive you. And then he talks about false prophets, false teachers, false Christs coming. Mm -hmm. He said this will be one of the converging signs of the end times. It would be a signal, a marker. It would be a condition on the earth just about the time Jesus is ready to come back mm -hmm. for, for his people. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah, I'd like to mention to the viewers, pay very special attention to this because everybody's busy. Maybe they haven't paid any attention. But everything that is listed in this conversation we're going to have where the disciples said, Lord, what will be the sign of your coming? And he listed it. That's what we're going through right now. And it's very important that you pay attention to it. Um, have you noticed that sometimes a politician will lie when they know that we all know they're lying? <laughs> How does that work? Really stupid. <laughs> How does that work? And, and yet the, it's almost like certain people are deliberately and willfully blinded. They mm -hmm. will believe if he's of my party. Mm -hmm. I will believe him. Yeah. No, we need to test everything. Test the spirits to see whether they be of God, St. John said. Mm -hmm. Paul talked about, you see, Arthleen, do you know what people lack today? Discernment. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 5.14 said that God's people can exercise the power of discernment by recognizing good from evil, mm -hmm. wrong from right. And Isaiah told us it would, this, this last day's time would be a time when they'd be calling evil good mm -hmm. and good evil. So, And we have to agree that evil is waxing more and more and more. I have a gal come on here once a month to talk about going, what's going on in the public school system. Do you know that for toddlers, toddlers learning their first book, there's nothing like reading to a child and pointing out pictures about homosexuality and being a transgender and putting this idea in their mind, you know, maybe you'd rather be a girl. Well, they're three years old. That's evil. I can't even imagine. No. I can't, cannot mm -hmm. even imagine mm -hmm. for the life of me. But that's, that's how low they're going. Uh, Many will claim to be God's anointed. You're back to the discernment. The Holy Spirit will give it to you. The Holy Spirit will give you discerning of spirits, mm -hmm. but there's a, there's a time when you, you discernment is not the same as discerning of spirits. Discerning of spirits is you know the spirit behind a person, but discernment sometimes requires research on our part. Mm -hmm. and, and you can go to Google, you can go to uh, Bing, you can go to Snopes, you're not going to get heavenly discernment there. Right. You're going to get it from the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And you're going to get it from the Word of God. Think of this. You can go to Amazon and click on Christian Witch. And you will see a number of books for Christian witches. How it's possible to be a witch and be a Christian at the same time. And then click around and you'll find Christian yoga, which is, which was started. Oxymoron. <laughs> it's an oxymoron. You, you, there is no such thing as Christian yoga. Mm -hmm. it, it started by sh shamans, sh sh shamans, uh, uh, sorcerers. Even the author uh, of the Yoga Sutras was a sorcerer. And it's clear if you study it. And Christian witchcraft, Christian yoga, Christian paganism of all things. There are books being sold on this. And Arthelene, there are people falling for it. You know, the first, you, you have addressed the quote Christian yoga thing, even on this program. But I was in Bible college and a wonderful missionary from India, Costin, his last name was Costin. I think his Alfred. first name was David. Alfred Costin. Alfred Costin. He, he addressed yoga. 
Yes. And that's where it came from, I believe, India. Oh, it, it did now. And the Bible even talks about these practices of the East, and God told his people, don't do that. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, uh, here's... Here's a no-brainer. Wars, revolutions, riots, insurgencies, revolts with rumors of more and more. We've watched, we've watched stores being burnt to the ground. We've watched all kinds of violence on TV, and people just stand around and watch it. It's been worse than ever. Mm -hmm. we, we've seen uprisings, and we've seen even some riots in the past. But what we've seen in the past two years I've never, never heard of anything quite like that. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's happening even here in the United States. We see things happening in other countries. I don't know if you know Bill Salas. He is one of the most amazing researchers I've, I've ever known. Mm -hmm. And he wrote a book on Psalm 83. And Psalm 83 talks about 10 groups, not nations, but 10 groups that are around Israel and it talks about a war. Every location that the prophet talked about is a location of Hamas, Hezbollah, oh, and my eight other terrorist groups, the exact pinpoint location. And then Israel gets tired of it, and Israel takes action and mm -hmm. does away with these 10 terrorist headquarter locations that are listed in Psalm 83. And it kind of gives you goosebumps, doesn't I it? I know it. Listen, when we're talking about these riots and insurgencies, so just when you see it in the future, just remember it's a sign that Jesus is coming. You can put all the political influence you want on it, but it's a sign that Jesus is very quickly coming to this earth. Which means... We better be ready. <laughs> we better be ready if you don't have faith in Jesus Christ who died on the cross and rose from the dead. Today is the day to do it because tomorrow may be too late. Mm -hmm. And another thing, Arthelene, that uh, your viewers want to know, I'm sure, is that we're talking about these signs. One thing that we'll notice is throughout history there have been earthquakes, there have been insurrections, mm -hmm. there have been famines, there have been all this. But Jesus said when you see uh, all, all these things come to pass. When you see mm -hmm. all these things begin to happen, mm -hmm. you know that summer's near, that uh, Jesus is coming, it's just at the door. So when all of them are converging together, when simultaneously, uh, rather yes. than sequentially, mm -hmm. simultaneously coming together, we're seeing all these signs spoken of in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, right now leading to a, a grand delusion. It's very exciting, too. It is exciting. If you're a believer, it's exciting. Now, here, here's one that's on the front of your paper every day, if you still take a newspaper, but it's certainly on the news. Ethnic wars, earthquakes, epidemics, pandemics, and pestilence. You know, I always thought that California had earthquakes, and I'm thankful. My sister lives there, and we say, well, I said, I'd rather have a hurricane because we know where they are. I said, the earthquake just, Florida had a little earthquake. There was one in Oklahoma not too long ago. Yes, that's right. That's right. They, in my, and I'm a kind of a news junkie, that was new to me. And who would figure they'd find a fault line right down the middle of America? A, a big, a big mm -hmm. fault mm -hmm. line. So I mean, that one that one got my attention, but the ethnic wars, there's a new one every day, isn't it? Rwanda, there? Kosovo, uh, in Russia, there was ethnic cleansing. Do you know ethnic cleansing is relatively a new word? Is that right? It, it, just yeah. in the past, uh, since uh, World War II, the, the Holocaust, Hitler tried an ethnic cleansing. Six million Jews. A quarter of a million gypsies, a quarter of a million homosexuals went to concentration camps and lost their lives in what they called the final solution. Mm -hmm. That was ethnic cleansing. Ethnic cleansing, that's very descriptive. Yugos former Yugoslavia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Christian persecution. I believe that most American Christians have no clue 
the persecution that's going on around the world. They're being killed in Nigeria for being a Christian on a regular basis. And get ready, Christians. There's all, you already see these signs of messing with the Bible and doing this and this and this. And I've had, I've had great questions about closing down a church in a pandemic. Now, don't get after me. That's just being honest. And I was real thankful for those pastors that said, not closing. Right. I and was real won. proud of them. Yep. And won. Mm -hmm. Yes, they all won. They all won. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to be really proud of them. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a couple things that discouraged me, and that is I'd like to see a whole lot more Holy Ghost conviction, and that's got to come from the pulpit on dealing with sin, the sin in your, that's where that's got to come from. And the other thing, I'm wondering if anybody like 40 and under really got uh, American history in school. They've been taking that out. Do they know the Constitution? Oh, Those pastors no. might not know that they don't have to close their church. Right. That's a very good there's, point. There's, a, there's yeah. a couple things there. That's why you got to stay on top of what's happening in your public schools. Because, you know, if you take your kids out, take enough of them out, they're going to have to bend because every kid that goes out, they lose money. And I, I saw that happen in Washington State, I think, some bizarre thing about uh, homosexuals or something. And the, pa the, the, stu the uh, parents said, uh-uh, about 600 kids were taken out and they're back in now. <laughs> Good for them. Yeah, yeah. Good for them. Um, this is something uh, to really address. Hopefully anybody in this situation will recognize themselves and that's the apostasy the i i don't really believe that anymore you know i don't i don't believe in jesus anymore just... or i don't believe in jesus the way the bible they, they'll take in in some uh there's some hindu writings they say jesus is a god and uh he came between the ages of 18 and 30, he came to India. He learned the Yoga Sutras, and then he went back to Israel to train his disciples in yoga. Now, that's a different Jesus. Uh, the Muslims believe in Jesus, and they love Jesus, but it's a different Jesus mm -hmm. than the Bible. And Paul said there, there would be different spirits, different Jesuses we got to have the right Jesus, mm -hmm. the one who was the eternal Son of God, born of the Virgin Mary, you know, conceived of the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit, the one who lived a sinless life, performed miracles, the one who was the true Messiah, the only way to heaven. Mm -hmm. we got to have the right Jesus. He wasn't a God. He is God. Yeah, and Satan is going to bring up the counterfeit and... Yeah. and if you don't know the scripture and you don't understand the power of the Holy Spirit, you can be so deceived. You can be as innocent as you can be and absolutely be deceived. I, uh, I was talking to one pastor the other day because I'm involved in every kind of denomination there is. Sure. And uh, I've worked in them. Uh, but I appreciate my Pentecostal heritage because of the emphasis on the Holy Spirit. Uh, I think there needs to be an emphasis on that. He's in the world today with us. And uh, if you want his help, that's one of his uh, titles. It's helper. Yes. Uh, in any of this thinking or decision making, he said he'd be there. He promised. He promised. And these things, when I read them in your newsletter, they startled me because I knew God was doing something to bring this to the forefront right now. And I wonder how many of our viewers have ever looked at the news and said, oh, that's in Matthew. <laughs> I hope all of them. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, it had to be really important. Matthew recorded it, Mark recorded it, uh, uh, Luke recorded it. And then Paul, in just about every book, spoke about something about the conditions and markers to look for. Uh, just before Jesus would come. And thank the disciples for the question. 
Oh, what, yes. What could be plainer? <laughs> Lord, what's the sign of your coming? Oh, this, 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 and this. <laughs> and Daniel asked the same thing when, when they, these angels were showing mm -hmm. him things about the future. He said, when will these things be? Mm -hmm. He wanted to know, too. And they said, ah, Daniel, just go your way, you know. Yeah, it's so true. You know, we are out of time. Time goes so fast when I'm with you. Oh, it does. Yeah. But what an important subject. And this won't be the last time we'll be putting a... A spotlight on it we're living we're living in this time and when you know the Lord it's very 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 exciting but you want your children in heaven with you it's time to be a godly homekeeper uh, you stay there I'll be right back Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy you may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. I would like to again uh, thank you and remind you that we are viewer supported and we appreciate so much your participation in Homekeepers. That address and phone number are on your screen right now. And thank you absolutely from all of us here, the crew, everybody at the Christian Television Network, we certainly do appreciate it. I think that you can't watch the news today if you do know anything about end times from the scripture. How could we deny that our nation in a very short amount of time is spiraling out of control? It seems like it's happened overnight, but then I had to think about it, that this building, this foundation of lawlessness and violence and turning away from God. I read recently that church membership is less than 50%. That wasn't true a few decades ago in America. People went to church, and these should be very sobering, sobering times. In the very near future, we're going to have a lot more to say about the end times, and I know that that really makes you want to be sure that your family is with you in heaven. So you pray for them, you teach them, you keep them in church, and please remember that we have prayer partners standing by right now to pray with you, to lift your heavy burdens, they're there. And ask, let me ask you to join me again next time, remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.